Off. And for more on this one, let's go down to the field and join Kinder de St. Alban. A decade ago, just last week, U.S. midfielder Michael Bradley was making his debut with the senior team as a young 18-year-old against Venezuela. Well, we asked him yesterday, what was that like? How did you feel you were going to step into that role? He said, look, off the field, on the field, two very different things. Off the field, you shut up, you listen, you learn, and you carry stuff. On the field, you don't know until you get out there what you can prove. Now he's in that role as a veteran 28-year-old with the young players on this team like a Christian Pulisic. As they step onto the field and as a captain of this U.S. team, he leads them onto the field for one of the most important games on U.S. soil, the first game of Copa America since the 1994 World Cup. Kindred, oh, it's all yours, baby. Well, how about that shot they gave her? You can tell in the lane you wanted the ball. You wanted it in your hands for that last second shot. What was going through your head? Um, I knew Lily was going to push the ball hard. Oh, well, congratulations on the win and a great game by you. And, Coach, I know we talked heading into the half, but what you needed to do to keep this lead and get this win, what was the situation there in the second half for you guys losing that lead? Kind of lost control of the board. Check so in with the third member of our team, Kendra D. St. Aubin, with head coach Mike McIntyre. Well, Coach, just got done talking about how you're returning 18 starters, nine on each side of the ball. That's got to bode well for you heading into this nice spring. Yes, it does. Um, you know, about nine of them are out. Well, you told us in the conference call this week, bring the fight every day. And I'm assuming that's what those returners are doing, even if they're on the injured list. So what does that motto mean for your team? Well, they've all been out there. And they... Thanks, guys. Well, manager Jose Mourinho and his Chelsea club arrived just this morning from Montreal for this game here tonight. Jose Mourinho says he wants his team to recover from that game a 4-2 loss to the New York Red Bulls, a game in which they allowed four goals in the second half, something he said is absolutely unacceptable regardless of who... Thanks, guys. I have both the offensive coordinators down here, you know, intently watching practice as we've been standing by. But, Coach, how has the transition been so far for you and what has surprised you in a positive way so far about this offense? It's been uh, it's been really, really good. You know, we have some really good skill on this, on this team. What kind of changes do you expect to bring to this offense and sort of the scheme with the talent that you do have? I think you'll see a, a, a lot of tempo this year. You know, April. Now you've been out here. You've seen this group for a while now. What has been pleasantly surprising? We've heard a lot about Stephen Montez, the quarterback who was mostly on the scout team last year, but getting his chance here in spring. Yeah, it's been it's been great for Stephen. It's been a great opportunity for him. He's taken. Well, you lost a pretty key receiver from this squad, and I know we can't get too into specifics about the recruits, but can you talk about the type of recruit and wide receiver you guys were looking for? Well, losing Nelson was huge. I mean, he. Was Thanks, guys. Well, Sefo, I saw you running over here, looking pretty good off that Liz Frank in. Injury, but how has uh, your rehab coming along? It's going along very well. You know, I'm in there every, almost every day, um, bar Sundays. So. Well, Coach McIntyre told us earlier this week that your maturity and your attitude about this team, and he had a kind of a one-on-one -on -one sit down with you when you had that injury. Can you give us a little insight into that conversation and what you've seen out here from your team in the spring? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Thanks, Rob. Well, Manchester United arrived in the San Jose area late yesterday evening, arriving in their usual fanfare. They came in the Rolling Stones private plane. They flew here from Seattle where they took on Club America just last weekend. They're ready to take on the earthquakes here tonight in front of a sold out crowd. No big surprise here with Manchester right United. Now. Our best of the best is Kendra D. St. Aubin and she's on the field with a special guest. Thanks guys. I'm here with athletic director Rick George. Well, you were a huge part of this $156 million project for the Champion Center and of course the renovation of the Dell Ward Center. But tell us a little bit about how you went about that, what this does for recruiting. I just heard the guys talking about it in the booth, but you can give a little bit more detail. Well, you know, it, it really was a collaboration amongst a lot of our staff members. And When we talked to Coach McIntyre earlier this week, he did say you guys kind of took everybody's great ideas and put it into one facility because you see the facilities. SEC, Pac-12, Big Ten, all these places are building. So it was a collaboration, not just from your staff, but of course the other schools. And you really have to do that to compete these days, don't you? Yeah, we did. You know, uh, you know, sometimes uh, stealing ideas is a form of flattery. Exactly. Before we get run over by Ralphie here, and also maybe we'll take a glimpse at the Masters uh, scoreboard, since I know you're a PGA guy. We were talking about that before we came back here from break. So appreciate your time. Thank you, and enjoy the scrimmage here in the second half of the game here. Thank you, and go Buffs. Welcome into GCU Arena on the campus of Grand Canyon University in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona, where the GCU Lopes welcome in the New Mexico State Aggies. The Lopes 16 and 11 on the season. The Aggies come in at 18 and 10. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Kendra D. St. Alvin. As we said, we are right here inside GCU Arena. The fans are starting to file. Thank you so much, guys. Well, I'm here with Derek McCartney, and you're going to walk in the spring here and graduate, but of course, you're going to be a junior eligibility wise. And a really important story here. We want to let people know why you're not playing on the field today. Can you give a little some insight? 
Yeah, so uh, I had the opportunity. Well, Coach McIntyre started that program a couple years ago, the Be The Match program, when he came here. And you right away, you guys go out and recruit people to sign up, but you yourself were like, why, why wouldn't I sign up, right? And I know you want to be a doctor, so maybe that had some influence on it. But you said also when you were at the facility, people are thanking you, but you're thinking, what the heck, I'm, sa I'm saving someone's life here. I mean, there's someone really in need. What was the mental thought process for you? When you did have to receive some injections for a few days to kind of boost your platelets, and that always has some side effects as well. Let's maybe switch to a little bit of the football side of things, as we were just talking about before we came back from the break. Last spring, a little bit of a disaster for you guys, according to your coach, Coach Levitt, because you had had three defense, defenses in three different seasons. Do you feel a little bit more continuity with the team this year in this spring? Uh, absolutely. Uh. Welcome back to Diamondbacks Live. I'm Kendra D. St. Aubin, and we are waiting for the game between the Diamondbacks and the Cardinals. But right now, I have third baseman Ryan Roberts. And, Ryan, you have a very special promotion that's coming up here on Saturday. What are the first 20,000 fans going to receive when they walk through that door? Kendra, we look for a great game matchup here at GC Arena tonight. Thanks, guys. Yeah, well, you know the Lopes are going to want to avenge that one-point loss, losing pretty much at the buzzer. Welcome into Brazil Stadium on the campus of Grand Canyon University in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona, where the Grand Canyon Antelopes at 9-3 and three on the season are getting ready to host the Kansas Jayhawks, and they come in at 4-7 and seven on the season. Good evening, everybody, at Brazil Stadium. Another beautiful night for baseball, a little bit on the chilly side, but both these teams are ready to play, and both of these teams looking to start off right where they left off last season. Coach, you guys got up to a great start against the Aggies, maybe faltered a bit down the stretch only shooting 37 percent what are your thoughts on that now let's welcome in Barry Butel and Scott Williams and guys they are going to need another tremendous performance like they wrapped up against that UTPA team to try to get a W against the Aggies here tonight. Kendra D. St. Aubin with Coach Stankowitz. Thanks guys I'm here with UNLV coach Tim Chambers well how do you feel so far about your starter Cody Roper 34 pitches not too bad. Yes we have Senator John McCain on hand here tonight and first of all, this is your first GCU basketball game in this arena, but we know you are no stranger to sporting events in the Valley. So what do you think of this atmosphere so far? I think the crowd is wonderful. Well, when we come back, we have lots of action here at Brazel Stadium. We're going to get it all underway. Barry Butel and Steve Lyons, they will have the first pitch coming up right after this break. Question, just looking to keep that momentum rolling after you guys had a great weekend last weekend against Nebraska. We have three good games. Introduce St. Olive. Thanks, guys. I'm joined by Royce Woolridge. Well, 20 points for you tonight, but clearly not the result that you guys were hoping for. Well, as we said, we are going to take a look at the WAC preseason rankings. The GCU Lopes right back in the thick of things.